Hello, it's Jeffrey Christian. Uh, it's about 9.30 on Thursday, the 27th of July. I'm reporting this for Friday morning. I am in Boca Raton. I was speaking today at Rick Rule, I guess a natural resource investment conference. He had asked me to talk about the topic, the world is not ending, but you can still make money in gold and silver. So that's what I talked about. I ran through some of the crazy stuff that people were talking about. I talked about the fact that really human progress has been relatively consistent over the centuries with some interruptions, um, but that human literature is full of dystopian views of the future and that people who promote gold investments often rely on fear of all of these untold catastrophes uh, being imminent. And of course, a lot of the people at a Rick Roll conference that were speaking uh, were focusing on those things. And a lot of the people in the audience were probably pretty scary too, uh, scared of those things too. And I said, you know, the world's got problems, but we're not about to collapse. And you should be happy. First off, you shouldn't fall prey to that human pe pessimism. And it's bad for your health. It's bad for the way you live your life. And it's also bad for your investments. And in fact, you should be happy because insofar as other people fall victim to this, these dystopian fantasies, uh, they'll keep buying gold. And as gold owners and investors, that should make us happy. Um, I then ran through the history. Yes, we have recessions, and then we have recovery. And we have fewer recessions than we used to, really since World War II, and then again, really since 1980. We're overdue for a recession, uh, but it probably isn't going to be as bad as the recessions of the 1870s, 1880, 1890, 1920, 1930s, um, 1947. We have been expecting one for 2024, 2025 for some time. We still are. And then I ran through all the things that are problematic in the world and how they've grown in size, many of them. The new ones have come up. And there are a lot of them hanging right over our forehead right now. Apropos of that, I'm on the 21st floor of a hotel, and there's a lightning storm right outside my window. So you may see flashes uh, reflected in my face, and you may also hear some thunder. So what you won't see, dollar is not going to collapse. Central banks really are not planning any great reset. No central bank is thinking about it or talking about it. It only gets talked about by gold promoters who are trying to drive sales with fear. There will never be a successful gold convert uh, convertible currency. There never has been. The only currency system that hasn't collapsed is the present one. And over five, 6,000 years of civilization, most of the previous currency systems, all of which have collapsed and failed and gone away, most of them were backed by gold. A gold convertibility does not mean that a currency system is going to be stable. Even the Bretton Woods system from 1945 to 1971 was just riddled with official devaluations and revaluations and massive economic dislocations because of the rigidity of the gold convertible currency system. So you're not going to see the treasury bill market collapse. You're not going to see China or other countries dumping treasuries. I'll get back to that in a second. And the treasury is not going to collapse, at least not in our lifetime. These are our economic outlooks. We do have a recession coming up. Um, people have asked me at this conference, do I expect a soft landing? My answer has been, I do not believe in a soft landing. I do see that we have a stronger economy in 2023 than a lot of people, including CPM Group, expected. That may mean that in 2024, 2025, whenever the next recession rises, and there will be a recession at some point, um, when the next recession arrives, maybe it will be 
less dramatic and deep as uh, than we are projecting right now for next year. But it remains to be seen. There are a lot of problems out there. I ran through some inflation, talk, showing how inflation had been very low from 2010 into 2021. It started rising as we came out of the COVID lockdown, and it's been coming down. I also talked about how part of the reason why headline inflation has come down so sharply in May and June is if you look at it, the big declines in prices were in heating oil and natural gas. And May and June are spring and summertime. So we're not using as much heating oil and natural gas and the prices have come off. And that has pulled the headline inflation down faster and further than the core, which is why economists look at core inflation excluding energy and food because those are very volatile sources of price increases and decreases. So ran through a couple of reasons why not to expect Armageddon economically soon. Talked about how inflation actually has been very low since the early 1980s, 83 or so, and actually has cut down further before it spiked higher. But that didn't stop gold from going from $250 to $2,000. And I talked about real interest rates and nominal rates. Nominal rates have gone from zero to five percent, five and a quarter percent. And at five and a quarter percent, they are still lower than they were for most of the time prior to 2002. So we've raised interest rates a lot. We're seeing some benefits with lower inflation. We're seeing some negatives with some weakness in some pockets of the economy, housing, interest rate sensitive housing, auto sales, although other factors are much more problematic for both housing and auto uh, sales than interest rates. And then how interest rates on an inflation adjusted basis are still just over 0% right now, maybe 1%, which is not a particularly compelling return on treasury. And I talked about how the dollar is not collapsing and how central banks are not dumping the dollar. And I ran through some numbers there, which I'll run through here. And you've seen this chart. The U.S. dollar still represents about 58, 60% of the foreign exchange reserves held by central banks. Central banks are not dumping dollars. Now, if you look at Treasury security, we have seen since 2021, since the economic recovery, since interest rates started rising. Over the last 18 months, we have seen about a trillion dollars of U.S. Treasury securities sold. And if you look at that trillion dollars and you say, is this the central banks dumping the dollar? No. 700 billion of that trillion, 70%, was sold by U.S. domiciled investors. When you say, who's dumping the dollar? It's U.S. investors. 70%, $700 billion. Treasury securities held by overseas holders of treasury securities fell by about $300 billion. Most of that was not central bank holdings, but rather private individuals. And no one really knows who those are. But economists think that somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of the U.S. Treasury securities held overseas are held by U.S. corporations, pension funds, investment funds, and individuals. And they hold it overseas so they don't have to pay U.S. taxes on their profits. And they hold those investments in treasuries because they're denominated in U.S. dollars. So they don't have to worry about weaker currencies and currency volatility, because again, the dollar hasn't been collapsing. Other currencies have shown a lot of weakness. The dollar is about 30% higher than it was five, six years ago. So it's not central banks dumping the treasuries, it's Americans. Now, you have seen some foreign holdings uh, sold, and you've seen some treasuries sold within China. 
Of the maybe $80 billion, I think, of treasuries that have been sold off in China, maybe $20 billion is from the People's Bank of China. It's not central banks dumping the dollar. It's investors getting out of low-interest treasuries. And why are they doing that? Because interest rates are rising. The explanation is obvious. It's apparent. It's right in front of people. And you don't have to concoct some cockamamie scheme that central banks are dumping the dollar because they want to de-dollarize. That's all nonsense. And it's nonsense put forth by people trying to scare investors to buy gold and silver for the wrong reason. There are good reasons to buy gold and silver. It's good to have a diversified portfolio. It's good to have insurance against catastrophic things, both personal and broader, national and international. Gold and silver, generally speaking, have done very well over time as investments. There are good reasons to own gold, and you can be very profitable owning gold and silver. But there are a lot of bad reasons that are just nonsensical. And I guess that's why Rick invited me to come down here and talk to his people. Seeing this, you s sorry about this, trying to get to this one set of charts here, and I don't seem to be able to do it, so I guess I won't show you. But I had just gold holdings by central banks, which have risen, but they're still very low. They're about 14% of the gold uh, of far monetary reserve. You can see the gold part at the bottom is total monetary reserves held by central banks. You can see gold is a portion of it, and it has risen over the last 20 years, mostly through price appreciation, but also through acquisition of additional gold. And it's gone from about 10% of monetary reserves held by central banks to around 14%. So central banks are not stampeding into gold, and they're not de-dollarizing. They're not dumping the dollar. That's all I've got now. Sorry if this thing is a little bit rugged, but that's what happens when you're in Florida. I'll see you next week, and I'll be come to you from New York City where I have two screens and better lighting. Take care. Take care of yourself. Take care of those around you, even if they're halfway around the world.